When you're a kid or even an adult that rarely gets to have your house to yourself, it can be amazing. Having the space to yourself to do whatever you want without having to be considerate of anyone else is freeing. Until that is, an outsider decides to spoil it. Here are 15 stories of creepy things that happened when people were home alone. Enjoy. I was home alone and heard the doorbell ring. I opened up to see this man standing there holding a large square bag. He starts talking about how he's an artist and is opening up a gallery soon. So he wanted to sell a couple of paintings for a lower price to drum up interest or whatever. I'm Canadian and uber polite, so I just nodded and let him open the bag and start showing me the paintings. They were nice, a couple landscapes, a couple portraits. And then the nudes started. This went past nude art. First one painted was okay. Second one seemed more photorealistic and depicted a very messy orgy. Then it went through bestiality and gore and got really intense and awful. This man just stood there flipping through the canvases and grinning at me. At one point, he made a small step toward me. And I just blurted out I didn't have enough money to pay for anything and slammed the door shut. I checked a couple of minutes later, and he was still there. I shouted from a window that I was going to call the police. And he left. I got up one night around 2am. I don't really remember the exact time, but I know it was midnight. I saw a figure in the hallway, like a silhouette. I couldn't see the face, but I could swear it was looking at me. I went back to my room, took a breather, went out again, and it was still there. I closed my eyes and shook my head and looked back, and it was gone. I went to the washroom because I felt like I was going to pee myself, and when I got back out to my room, the figure was in front of my room, looking at me. I closed my eyes, reopened them, and it was gone. I never saw it again. When I was a teenager, I lived in my father's basement. He would frequently go on business trips, and I would be alone in the house for up to a week at a time. One evening in spring, I was up alone watching TV at around 2 o'clock in the morning. When I heard through the open windows what sounded like two distinct sets of footsteps outside. Walking from the front yard around the side and into the backyard, where they stopped. It was then that I realized that since all my lights were on, I couldn't look outside. But from outside, you could see me. I immediately panicked, shutting off my TV and lights. So now, I was alone in my basement with no lights on, with what I thought were two prowlers sitting on my back deck. I don't know how long I was frozen in the darkness. But after I didn't hear any more sounds for a while... I quietly crept upstairs to try to get a better look at my backyard. Thankfully, all the lights upstairs were already off. Unfortunately, with the way the bushes and patio umbrella were set up, there were large blind spots where it sounded like those footsteps had stopped. I considered calling 911, but then when my father would inevitably find out, I knew I'd be forced to stay with my aunt when he was out of state. So I stared at that deck waiting to see movement for at least 10 minutes before I began convincing myself that my mind was playing tricks on me. I decided to go investigate outside. I grabbed the closest thing to a weapon I could, an old shepherd's axe, went out my front door and crept around the side of my house, crouching behind a bush. I finally mustered the courage to swing the axe into the bush and shout out, Hey! Nothing would happen, right? No one would be there. I'd have a good laugh, albeit an embarrassed one, when I realized I was just being paranoid. Instead, I immediately heard the sound of deck chairs scraping on wood, and two sets of human footprints 
running off in the opposite direction. My heart stopped. I felt like I blacked out for a second from the adrenaline rush. I ran back around the side of my house in the direction I came. What am I supposed to do now? There was no time to think. I made it to my front door, swung it open, rushed inside, slammed it shut and stood there in the darkness, practically hyperventilating. I stared out into the street, waiting to see someone leaving the property, but no one did. It was then that I realized that now, I wasn't safe inside my house like I thought I would be. Now I was trapped. I ran out the front door into the middle of the street where I could scream if I saw someone. Surely by now I should have called the cops, but I wasn't thinking clearly anymore, if I ever was. Now I was facing my house, but I still couldn't see anyone. So I glanced to the left down the street, nothing, then to the right. Two male figures were walking away from me, a block and a half down the street. Just as soon as I noticed them, they turned left at the T-junction onto the main road and disappeared out of sight. For some reason, I ran after them, and when I turned the corner, there was no one there. There should have been nowhere to go, and they would have only made it about a half a block if they were just walking. They must have had a car waiting there. I was 13 at the time. When I was around 10 years old, I was at home when my mom went to the shops. I had been in the sitting room watching television before deciding I wanted to drink and headed to the kitchen. From the door of the kitchen, I saw a tall, thin outline of a man outside of my back door and could see the doorknob turn. He put his hand through the cat flap but was unable to reach the door. He went after a few minutes, so I removed the key from the back door and put it back on the kitchen table. I sat on the stairs in front of the front door until my mom got back, shaking the entire time. One day while doing my laundry, one of the lights blew out in my basement. My basement is set up so that the laundry room is split from the other side of the basement with a wall and a door. In order to get upstairs, you have to exit the laundry room and go through the other part of the basement. Since there was only light on one side, it was pretty freaking dark. I finished the laundry I had to do while dreading the walk through the dark basement. I exited the laundry room and got halfway through the basement when I heard a loud cackle. Imagine a sound people make when they imitate a witch. Take that and imagine that the witch had been smoking for 50 years, making her voice deeper and hoarser. That's what I heard, clear as day, right behind me. I didn't look or hesitate. I bolted for the stairs. I waited for my father to get home and then changed the bulb. I have yet to hear that cackle since, and I have not told a single person in the house about it. My mom has mine and my siblings framed senior pictures on a shelf. As the middle child, mine was staggered behind the other two. My family left on a trip, but I had to stay back and work. A few hours after they left, there was a smashing sound. I went into the room and saw my frame lying in the middle of the room with glass everywhere. I don't know what made it fall, especially that hard or how it fell without knocking over the other two pictures. It was as if a ghost picked up only my picture and threw it on the ground as hard as they could. I was house-sitting for my parents, who live in the actual middle of nowhere. The closest neighbor they have is about a mile away. My parents had taken their dogs with them on vacation to the beach so it was an eerie and silent house to be in. It was the kind of quiet where you wouldn't want to turn the TV off, or you would be faced with nothing but the eerie sounds of your breath and footsteps. 
On one completely pitch black night, void of any moon, I stepped onto the back porch for a quick smoke before bed. As I reached the bottom of the steps, I pulled out a cigarette from the pack and fumbled for my lighter. And as I flicked the wheel, the glow of the small flame briefly lit up my surroundings. In that split second of a brief illumination, it became apparent I was not alone. In the few seconds it took my brain to process the dimly lit image, I realized that I had just momentarily seen some massive, brown-haired, four-legged beast eating from one of the dog's bowls by the steps leading from the porch into the house. And I mean massive. Twice the size of me, at least. Covered in some dirty brown human-like hair from front to back. I didn't make out its head, but I knew from the glance of its torso that it was something that I'd never seen in the wild. As I stood there in fear from what was standing not three feet away from me, unseen in the blackness of night, it lets out some kind of deep, guttural grunt and plods off into the woods, shaking the porch as it runs away, leaving me scared and shaking in the pitch black dark with a still unlit cigarette hanging from my mouth. Needless to say, I ran inside, turned on every light, and hid in the most interior room of the house, like any grown adult man would. My brain could not process what it might be, but my imagination was filling in all the blanks with whatever scary beast could be lurking out in the woods, just a few feet from my parents' back door, just waiting to eat me. A couple of weeks later, I finally found out that there were some reports that some of those giant feral pigs had moved onto my parents' land. No giant scary monster, just some overgrown hairy pig looking for a meal. I was in middle school and my parents were out. I put in a new CD I hadn't listened to yet. I fall asleep on the couch. I wake up to someone loudly whispering, There's someone in your house. Repeatedly, There's someone in your house. It was just one of those stupid hidden tracks on the CD that played after a half an hour of silence. But I don't think the cats ever recovered from the noises I made waking up, not knowing where the heck the noise was coming from. I remember a while back, I was around 11 or 12. I was looking for my Nintendo DS. I looked everywhere, under my bed, behind my pillows, on my shelves, wardrobes, even in the inside of my bed cover. I completely took off my bed covers. They were white compared to my black DS so it would have been easily visible. I looked everywhere. Pretty annoyed and aloud, I said, I can't believe I lost it again. Then I quickly went to the bathroom. I was gone no longer than 60 seconds. Came back into my room and saw my DS. Opened right in the center of my bed. I was spooked to say the least. And all I could muster was a timid thank you to whoever or whatever found my DS for me. I woke up at around 2 a.m. to use the restroom, looked down the hallway and saw some figure standing in my kitchen. I looked away and looked back, and it was gone. I almost didn't have to use the restroom because I just about pissed myself. My dad loves to whistle, something I do a lot too. When he comes home, I often know it because he mostly enters the house whistling. I was alone in the house in my room. I can't remember where the rest of my family was, but I know I was waiting for my dad to arrive home from work. I was doing something on the computer and I heard whistling in the living room. I figured I just didn't hear the door opening. The whistling continued. After a while, I got up just to say hello. 
No one was there. Door locked. Gate locked. The whistling stopped when I was on my way from my room to the living room, though. I have no explanation for it. When I was a young kid, I was home alone while my mom took my sister to school. After about 15 minutes, I heard the front door unlock, door open, and footsteps. They went into the kitchen, but were very slow and heavy footsteps. I assumed it was my mother, but thought it sounded weird for her. Normally, she calls out when she gets home, and she's a slim woman. This sounded like a big built guy with boots on. So I called out, and the footsteps stopped. Dead silence. I freaked out, grabbed our dog from outside, and hid in a corner. A short while later, my mother did come home, and I told her about it, and that I didn't hear them leave. However, the door was still locked. The windows were locked, and there wasn't a single sign that anyone had entered the home. Not even a mark on the carpet from a shoe. To this day, I have no idea what happened. I live in a slightly rural area. One night after midnight, I hear banging on my door. I thought it was my boyfriend attempting to get a booty call, as he is apt to do. When I get to the door, I could see through the small glass window. But instead of it being my boyfriend... I saw the sight of an unfamiliar bearded face. He didn't see me and I backed away from the door. My house was in a cellular dead zone, so I knew my cell was useless. I grabbed the landline next to my bed to call 911, but the line was dead. It was just like a horror movie, where the killer cuts the phone line. Meanwhile, the guy was still pounding away and slurring, Let me in. I grabbed the biggest chef knife I own, which is enormous, and locked myself in the bathroom. I stood on the edge of the tub behind the shower curtain, figuring I might have a chance if I jumped on him from above and stabbed him between the neck and the shoulder when he tried to bust down the door. I was terrified, but also pleased with my plan, and I waited. He started working his way around the outside of the house. I could hear him sliding his hands along the siding and banging his fists against the walls. For a split second, I reveled in my surprisingly badass plan. Then I realized the sabotaged phone hadn't been charged in days. Maybe one of the other handsets still worked. I have never felt more fear than the moment when I climbed down from my hiding spot unlocked the bathroom door, and went in search for the second handset. All while the madman was moving around the outside of my house, violently trying to unlock every door and window. I found a working phone and called 911, but the closest officer was over 15 minutes away. I was told to stay on the line, but locked myself in the bathroom again. That was the longest 15 minutes of my life. When the police finally arrived, they had me identify a cuffed, scuffy, drunk off his butt, dirty hippie kid. Apparently, there had been a party down the road. He got disoriented and thought my house was his friend's house. He was just trying to get back inside of a party. And I was inside 20 minutes of pure terror. When I was 19, my parents and brother had gone away for the weekend, and I stayed behind. I had a pretty rough night and was pretty drunk, so I pulled a Britney Spears move and cut off all my long hair drunkenly, thinking I'd reinvent myself because I was moving away from university the following week. When I finished rinsing the freshly cut hair off my neck in the shower, I left the bathroom to find a note in the hallway that said, I was going to leave you a note, but I see that you're still here. Naturally, I was walking around my house in the nude as I thought I was alone, but when I opened the door to my room, 
There was a guy with his hair and his face standing in the middle of the room grinning at me. I freak out and scream bloody murder as one tends to do when you're a new 19-year-old girl encountering an unexpected stranger in their empty house at 2.30 in the morning until I recognized him. It was this boy I had dated in my first year of high school, three years prior, for two weeks until he ran away from home. It turns out he had heard I was moving away and just wanted to talk. He didn't hurt me or threaten me in any way, other than breaking into my house in the middle of the night. He handed me some clothes from my bed and we chatted until he eventually left. I found out two years later that he's been institutionalized with schizophrenia. I have a sleep talk recorder app on my phone. Basically, it only records when it hears sounds. So when you wake up, you have a bunch of 8 to 20 second sound clips, usually the sound of rolling around in your sleep. One night I was home alone, parents were out, brother was at a friend's house. And when I woke up and was listening to the recordings, I heard, hmm, one, two in what sounded like a German man's accent. There's no way I could have made that sound, as I'm a teenage girl. What about you? Have you had something scary happen to you when you were home alone? How do you think you would react in any of these situations? If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.